This isn't gonna work well. <laughs> it's fun. You are about to embark on a journey to another dimension. Its doorway is this seemingly innocuous model railway tunnel. And it starts right now. Hey, welcome to It's My Railroad, the how-to show for regular people. On this show, we celebrate regular people building their model railroads. You're still not going to find some expert people doing expert stuff here. But what you're going to find is a lot of people having a really good time making some stuff that doesn't look half bad. So if you're into that sort of thing, why not just subscribe? And then don't forget to push that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. All right, rail fans, let's get into this. Today, we're going to start a little mini series on tunnel portals. Yay! The crowd goes wild. Uh, here's the deal. If you guys know, we've got the switch junction lead coming down to Fertile Valley through a tunnel. We have the double track main coming through Fertile Valley on its way up to the second deck. Both of those tunnels need a tunnel portal. It's the part of the entrance of the tunnel you'll see as we get into it. If you don't already know what a tunnel portal is, I want to put them in now because I'm concerned that if I bring the mountains and stuff down into that area and then put in the tunnel portals, what if they don't line up? What if they don't match? What if it doesn't work? Then I got to redo everything. Who, who needs that action in their life? I know I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the two tunnel portals constructed. And while we're at it, we're going to finish the inside of the tunnels. Then we can bring the mountains down. So I've got a lot more to say about it. I've got a lot more reasons why we're going to do it, but I can't do anything standing here. So let's head over to Fertile Valley and take a look at what we're doing. Hey, welcome back to the Hobby Room. Today is Saturday, March 30th. Just got done with an awesome episode of Track Smack. Boy, I'll tell you what, if you're not watching that show, what's wrong with you, baby? You gotta watch the show. Anyway, today I'm excited to get started on my two tunnel portals for Fertile Valley. Now listen, a little history, okay, for you. This tunnel portal, this, whoa, that just fell down. This tunnel right here is part of the original equipment of the Brown Smith Railroad. This tunnel was built when they were shipping stuff from Switch Junction all the way over to Port Smith. So it was built in the late 1800s, early 1900s. I don't know. They didn't keep great records back then. But anyway, um, it was made out of wood and it's meant to support all the dirt that's up there in the mountain. Now, here's the thing inside the tunnel, it's solid rock. Oh, yeah. That means they needed explosives. <laughs> to blow it out. Whew. I'm glad I wasn't there when that happened because I'm afraid of loud noises, people. Anyway, <laughs> we're not, we're going to have better luck building our tunnel, I think, than they had back then. So hey, listen, you might recognize this little gem right here. All right. This is a plaster tunnel portal that's meant to look like I just broke it. I guess I could super glue it. <laughs> So anyway, dropped the tunnel portal, broke it into two pieces. Oh my gosh, that's the regular guy kind of way. Here's the problem with this tunnel portal, in addition to the fact that it's now two pieces, and that is this. It's sort of stamped out to look like it's wood, but it's not wood, it's plaster. I really had a hard time back in the day detailing this. Matter of fact, this used to be the tunnel portal for the tunnel that goes under the coal mine over there on, on that module. Um, it just doesn't look like wood. As a matter of fact, I learned some time ago, the only thing that really honestly always looks like wood in a model is nah, wood. So I have a hankering, frankly. Can we still use hankering? Can I still say that? To build me a wood tunnel portal to put in back there. And it's going to be kind of custom because it's going to be a little higher than a, no a normal tunnel portal. It's got some wings that come off of it to support the mountain here and then off of here. Anyway, we're just going to kind of make it up as we go along. I don't have a, a written out diagram of it. I've got something in my head that I think is going to work well. So I've made myself a makeshift hobby table over there where the first deck is, where the port's going to be. Let me take you over there real quick. Let's get some of this wood weathered. Let's get it cut and let's start putting it together. Hey, welcome to the makeshift 
hobby table over here on the other side of the layout, where I present you with this piece of wood right here. This piece of wood is roughly the size, it's cross-section, roughly the size of a Pico in scale railroad tie. And the reason I'm using this is because in the story of my railroad, the Brownsmith Railroad, when they built the tunnel portal over there at Fertile Valley, they used railroad ties as their cribbing and then they went through and they put some obviously much longer pieces in, custom pieces, to hold that up. Now, here's a little philosophy for you from me, the regular guy, and that is a tunnel portal is basically a retaining wall with a hole in it for a train to go through. So that's going to be my guiding philosophy as we move forward. So you might catch some pieces of things that are different than what you might see elsewhere, but then again, it's my railroad, baby, and I'm going to do it the way I want to. Before we get started staining and weathering this piece of wood, uh, we need to treat it a little bit, and here's why. The manufacturing process will leave this kind of, I don't know, it's like fuzz on the wood. It's even hard to show you on a close-up uh, on camera here, but I just know it's there, and you'll know it's there when you see it. So what I like to do is take just a piece of uh, sandpaper, this is kind of coarse, uh, and just gently rub it over there. Just turn it 90 degrees every time, like this. It's quite peaceful. I'm enjoying this right now. Right, four of those, and then we do it four times like this. And that gets all that, that fuzz off of there. I don't wanna go too crazy because I don't wanna start whittling this down to like a size of a human hair or something. So anyway, once that's done, we are ready to start staining. Let me get set up for that and let's make that happen. Hey, look, I'm finally wearing gloves in the hobby room. Isn't that exciting? Hey, the reason I put on the gloves and I also have on my cool shop apron is because we're gonna do some staining. I wanna stain these to look more like, well, wood and not little pieces of model wood. And to do that, I'm gonna use this uh, Minwax Wood Finish Penetrating Stain Provincial in color. You can tell by the can, I've used this a few times and I really like it. But the uh, first thing we're gonna need to do is shake it up. Because here's the deal, if you don't shake up stain, you end up with like the oily kind of part and then the thick kind of part. It doesn't work really well. So you shake it up really good. I think that's good. And put it down and then you open it up with a top popper. Uh, where's my top popper? I don't know, hold on. Hey, couldn't find the top popper, but I'm gonna use a screwdriver to open this can up right now. And we just do that, put that there. So anyway, there you go. Uh, I'm going to use this banker's box lid as my paint tray because I can't find a real paint tray and I'm too lazy to go look for it. So we're just going to use this and Bob's your uncle. So these are the sticks that we talked about. And what I intend to do is just basically put all of them together kind of like this and just get a brush and run the stain over them, get them nice and stained, and then uh, I'm gonna put them down on paper towels over here. There's no paper towels over here. Let's lay those out real quick. There you go, paper towels. And then, <laughs> now I need a brush. Where the heck's my brush? Hang on a second. And without spending a bunch of time, I found this brush right here. And here's the thing, not a special brush, it's just a brush. So let's grab these suckers like this, dip them in the, dip the brush in the stain and just stain away like this. Um, easy enough, right? And as long as I get it on there pretty thick, it's gonna get on there well enough. I can always touch it up later, but there's another treatment we're gonna do as well. Well, there you go. That's like five sticks and it took me just a few seconds to stain. And now I'm gonna set them down over here on the paper towels. And then sort of just roll them around a little bit to get the excess stain off. Like this, isn't this amazing? You guys are so impressed right now. And then take the paper towels and wipe them. like that, and then, you know, from my perspective, they look pretty woodish, so let me give you a close-up and show you how that looks. Boy, look at that, that doesn't that look like wood? 
Isn't that amazing? That's just little wood strips with that stain kind of put on and then rubbed off real quick. But, you know, I am not really 100% happy with the way it looks, only because everything seems to be the same color, pretty much. So I got something else I want to do. Um, let me get set up for a different treatment and let's make that happen. Okay, with the stain setup kind of out of the way, I'm going to introduce to you again my friend, the chalk paint right here. I'm going to shake it up. Chalk paint is a water-based paint that uh, kind of dries chalky and you can sort of dilute it to make stains out of it and stuff. I really like it. You can get it at most big box hardware stores or especially craft stores. Anyway, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this gray paint and squirt it out right there and take a brush. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to push this out of the way a little bit. And then what we'll do is we'll take these sticks that we just stained. I lay them out and then using kind of a dry brushing technique, we dab the uh, brush into the paint, take most of the paint off, and then just start rubbing it along these pieces of wood. Now I've got all five stacked up here like this. It's gonna be kind of random across the top of them. We'll roll them over a little bit here and there. But then when we cut them into links, I think it's gonna look pretty good. We're gonna give it a shot. So let's just keep going with this. If I put too much on, because I suck at dry brushing, <laughs> just rub it with the glove like that. And it kind of, it's just kind of giving that bleached look to it, which is something that uh, I'm kind of going for and I think looks really cool. Matter of fact, I think I'm discovering something new here with the whole glove uh, brushing technique. Uh, do you dry brush? No, I glove brush. Okay, once I got like one side of them done, I'm just gonna try to randomly do this deal. Just randomly turn them. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I'm just randomly turning them. Lay them all down, put them back together in a sequence. like that, and then hit them again. What this is gonna do is some of the areas are gonna have more gray, some are gonna have less gray, some are gonna have more wood, some are gonna have less wood, but it's gonna be relatively random, which is gonna go for uh, the kind of look I'm after right now. So that's kind of cool. So we'll just brush some more of this stuff on here randomly. Rub it in. And maybe I'll just do that one more time. And there you go, I think that's pretty good. All right, hopefully you can see that well enough. That's kind of the variegated look that I was kind of going for. Not all the pieces are brown, some are a little more gray. And by the time we cut these into little pieces, I think it might look pretty good. So anyway, there you go. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so with the staining and the uh, weathering and junk done to these sticks, it's time to move on to the next process, which is to cut up a bunch of little sticks that we can glue together um, and it's probably gonna take a long time, but let's get on it. Let me introduce you to my chopper. So this is the chopper by Northwest Shortline. I've got a chopper one, which this is. There's also a chopper two. Also have one of those, like the chopper one better, uh, mostly because I can put infinitely long pieces here in the chopper two. Uh, I can't, but we'll get into that some other time. What I need to do is make me some eight foot long pieces to build this wall from. And so, Steve, how are you gonna do that? Well, swing, I have an N-scale ruler that's got actual N-scale foot marks on it right there. And so all I need to do is take something, let's say like this stop right here and set it in there and make a gap between that stop and the blade, eight feet, boom, Steve's your uncle. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this ruler right down and then bring the blade down on zero. Now here's the thing, you can't see that very well in what I'm showing you, but I've got this blade sitting right on the zero mark of the ruler. Then all I have to do is slide this piece up until it gets to the eight foot mark on the ruler, which is right there, and then take this little clamper deal up here, it's got a thumb screw on it, thumb, 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 and screw that down 
that should be right at eight feet now. So let's just take a sample cut and see what happens. You put the piece of wood in there up against the stop and then it's cut. Pull it out. If we put that up against the ruler, that is, that's right at eight feet. Here's something else we need to think about though. What if at some point this little finger gets dislodged and I need to make some more of those? What am I going to do now? E Z. We'll take the eight foot piece. We'll put it back in there. I'm going to push it up against the blade. Like that. Then take the stop. Push it up against the piece. And go through the same process of tightening that screw down. I lift up the blade, pull the piece out. And now if I run a piece of stock in there and go chop. You can look back and see that the piece I started with and the new piece I cut are exactly the same length. Isn't that amazing? So here's the deal. I'm going to cut a bunch of eight footers. I'm going to cut a bunch of four footers and then I'm going to go through and start gluing these together. This very first piece we're going to glue together. I wanted to make this T in it like this with this one centered right on that one. So the only way to really make a good mark at this scale for me is to run this on the ruler right to zero, hold it down and just make a score with the X-Acto knife. And quite frankly, I can barely see it myself, uh, but I, I can barely see it. You guys aren't gonna be able to see it. And Steve's your uncle. So for this very first one, I'm gonna go a little crazy just take a little dab of super glue, very small amount. I know you can't see it well because my fingers are in the way, but I'm holding it together. You get to sort of stick and lay it down and it's not in the center. Now it's in the center. Run this square up in here to get this square and I'll tell you why in just a second. Let me hold this down and get my fingers out of the way. Well, there it is for better or for worse. Um, I had to stop rolling video. Uh, otherwise I would have used up all the footage on my chip because that wasn't easy. I don't know why I take on such ridiculously difficult tasks, um, but I do. So anyway, that piece is done. I use super glue to glue it down and it seems to be okay for now. Now enough with the super glue. We're going to switch to wood glue now that I got that piece set up pretty strongly for now. Just put a little bit of wood glue in there like that and grab a, a toothpick. Get just a dab on the toothpick and dab it on where I'm going to put the next piece. like that then grab the next piece and put it on and I'll show you how I'm overlapping this as soon as I get it on there well so there's that kind of glued together three pieces of it glued together you see how they sort of are overlapping right there and that's going to continue on both directions here for one level on the front and then up to the top and the back you'll see what all that gibberish means in a minute but anyway you can see for now how it's all starting to come together All right, so that's kind of the, uh, the system right there. Here's the thing, on the outside of the tunnel, this piece stays like this, this piece stays like this, 
because there's going to be some some ports that go there i'll show you later inside the tunnel though i'm going to put a short piece right there so this is one continuous wall well it took a great bit of doing because i've got all these little pieces to glue together there's like 500 pieces right there i don't know this is going to take some time to do but i think the effort's worth it i mean if you look at this uh i'm i'm kind of digging the way it looks and the treatments we gave the pieces of wood are really coming out to look great it brings out some detail you can actually see that there's individual pieces of wood you can see right now that that comes right about up to the point where we need to put a cross member across to the other side to do that though i need to build the other side of this the mirror image so i'm going to go through bang that out real quick then we'll come back and see what it looks like to put them together to look like a real tunnel portal well you know i'd say that overall looks pretty good but there's just one thing uh, i'm not really thrilled about let me back that train out of there for a second come on quicker we have an audience quicker train stops if you look back in here, this uh, this is supposed to be straight up and down. Those are supposed to be parallel edges. And some kind of way, when this whole contraption got glued together, they're not. When I put the one piece over the top of it uh, and glue it on there, it sits at like this, I don't know, trapezoid thing. I gotta squeeze it together. I don't know. Um, listen, it's taken me a great number of hours to glue all those pieces together and to get it to there. And by now on a Saturday night, I'm a little tired. So I think we're gonna have to pick this up again in the next episode. Well, there you go, real fans. We've kind of got the tunnel portal started. Got a couple of problems we got to deal with, but I promise you by next week, we'll have it squared away and we're gonna have some cool wing walls coming off of that I'm gonna show you. Make sure you tune in then. But I'm so glad that you were here with us today for It's My Railroad. Listen, if you liked what you saw, please, Make sure you subscribe to the video and push the little bell icon. Make sure you like and share the video with somebody. And until next time, my name is Steve Brown. Rail on, my friends.